to support the recent release of Net2 Pro software version 6.04, which contains a new occupancy management feature, we have built this tutorial to share not only the how-to element of configuring different use cases, but also to share why we believe this feature can be beneficial for your clients. Let's begin by explaining what the Net2 occupancy management feature is and what it does. The occupancy management feature has been designed to allow system users to set occupancy limits within area or areas within a building or on an open site, thus controlling the maximum number of people within any area at a given time. The feature includes the ability to visually display the level of occupancy in a designated area to aid the visual management of people density. This is achieved by simply creating a web page within the software that can be saved on a network and displayed on any device that has a network connection. By configuring entry and exit readers, the occupancy manager can deny access to the next person that takes the occupancy level above the agreed limit. Alternatively, the feature can be set not to deny access, but to send an SMS message or email to notify a person that the limit has been surpassed. Let's look at a number of ways the occupancy manager can be used. Here we have a large open area where social distancing measures are in place and the maximum occupancy level is set to 20. Once the maximum occupancy level is reached, you will see the entry readers flashing red, indicating that maximum occupancy has been reached. The next person will now be denied access to the area. Our visual display board is also indicating to people within the area that the maximum occupancy level has been reached. When one person leaves the area, we see that the next person is granted access, showing how the occupancy manager can control a one in and one out methodology. For our second example, here we have a narrow walkway containing a blind spot where social distancing measures cannot be maintained. By using the Occupancy Manager, in combination with triggers and actions, we can set up a traffic light system to indicate when the walkway is occupied. The light status switches from green to red when a person enters the walkway and will deny access to others. Once the first person leaves the area, the traffic light status switches to green and access will now be granted to the next person. For our third scenario, within your client's building, they may wish to monitor and control occupancy levels across multiple areas. For this example, let's use a manufacturing facility where we have adjacent areas using the occupancy manager. We can see here by setting up multiple areas, the occupancy manager tracks the movement of a person from one area of the facility to another. The occupancy manager removes the person from the area they vacate and adds them to the area in which they have arrived. For the next section of the tutorial, we'll now walk through how to configure the Net2 Occupancy Manager in order to achieve the solutions that we've just presented. To enable the Occupancy Management feature, it first must be configured within the Net2 Configuration Utility. Within the Features tab, ensure that areas are enabled and check the Occupancy Management box. Under the HTML Reports tab, select Generates Occupancy Management Reports. You can amend the location for these files and the page refresh interval. You can also choose to hide the user table within the report by checking the ticks box. This removes the names of people from the visual reports. To configure the occupancy management of an area, select Areas, ensuring that Areas and Reader definitions are configured. Under the Occupancy Management tab, select the maximum occupancy of the area and whether to restrict access or not should the limit be reached. The HTML reports for that area can be found in the location specified within the Net2 configuration utility. We can see users come into the area and increase the occupancy level in real time. When users leave the area, you're able to see them removed from the table and the occupancy indicator reduces. The event is registered in the events table should maximum occupancy be reached. In scenario two, 
the maximum occupancy of the corridor area is set to 1 within areas. And to restrict access set to yes. To use traffic lights, an I.O. board is required to control red and green lights. Relay 1 will be used to control the green light and Relay 2 will be used to control the red light. Once configured, the triggers and action rule needs to be set up. To begin, we need to create the rule to turn on the red light when someone is in the walkway. This rule is created that when a specified occupancy level is reached in the specified area equals 1, the relay of the I.O. board green light is turned off and the relay of the red light is turned on. Another rule is created for when an area is empty. Turning off the red light when the occupancy of the area is zero. And the green light switched on. In scenario three, each area needs the maximum occupancy configured and whether to restrict access when full. The HTML report will show when a user leaves one area and enters another, adjusting the occupancy level as expected.